so it's a wet afternoon and this is part two part one got on a bit sort of long but I made this cylinder and that looks pretty good found all the rest of the materials I think let's get on and do part two So here we go, um, got this, it's aluminium, wants a bit of a clean up, it's a bit rough but it is straight, sort of, straight enough, and a good sand up will fix that. That wants to go I guess somewhere about there, um, this wants to go there, and If we have a look with the sharpie, the bit of wants to go there and a bit of wood about that long. That's roughly how long it is. So there's the the thought process behind the, the design. First thing I guess will be to clean this end up, get it nice and square, mark this off to a, a sensible sort of dimension. 115 millimeters or something. And not that that's particularly important. And if we mark the centre here at about 25 millimetres and probably this one here at about 35 or 40. We could get in and drill some holes. So the rain's bucketing down, I hope you can hear me. It's a wet afternoon, it's time to get on and do this. Probably not super critical to get the ends nice and square. We've got this bit of stock and that end's pretty good. That end's not so good, so we might chop that end off. If we set the jenny legs up to about halfway, You can probably do this by eye without too much effort. Mark a line down the center each side. We figure we might make this 120 mil long. We'll scribe that off there, we might cut that off later. Now if we line that up there somewhere. This wants to sit up above the, the base plate and I've got a bit of timber there, just a bit of pine. have a look at that it's about 19 mil so we might use that for a base plate just about anything will do but that'll be just the thing and so our crankshaft wants to be about 20 mil plus whatever else I reckon if we made that 40 mil, and just check that with that on centre there, that on centre there, that's heaps enough. Everything seems to have a bit of clearance. Let's put a centre punch mark on that one and a centre punch mark on that one. And we might drill this for a nice fit and a 6 mil fit. 
and this one four millimeters for the for this bolt. We could probably mark the ports on here while we're at it, but we don't know really how much kick we're going to have. If we want to, I reckon 20 mil. going to be pretty good. If we get a set of dividers and measure and mark that. If you're anything like me you probably got about 10 sets and just find the sharpest one and throw the rest away or get rid of them. Now it's handy to have a couple of sets. If we draw a radius on there I'm just sort of guessing here because I've sort of done this before and I know a bit about what it needs. We've got two holes marked there. And we can carefully, I don't know, I guess I'm in frame there. Might. We'll try that. We can carefully with a sharp center punch Mark that one for the center hole. And that one. And that one. And that one. That's our layout done, as easy as that. What we'll do is when we've worked, got all these in place and we've worked out what the, the offset is we'll just use a transfer punch or, or something and mark this through the hole both ways and find a, a, a decent place to put the hole and that's done so here we go, this one needs to be 6 millimeters to fit the bolt this one needs to be four millimeters to fit the this screw. These two really don't matter, but they want less. How do I explain this? They want less distance. The holes for timing, so it runs. The distance between the holes needs to be less, or fractionally less than the diameter of the holes. So I guess that's uh, they want to this hole here wants to almost overlap when it comes across so let's get the drill press out again set these up just nice in the vise and I'll drill these might do that off camera so there we go I've got those holes drilled uh, this one's about 5.9 for a 6mm bolt. That's a pretty good fit there. I think I don't think it wants to be any wobblier than that. That should run nice. And this one is about 4mm. But that's a good fit there too. I'm pretty pleased with that. There's a burr on the back. If we take that out, we'll have a look and see that. What I'm probably going to use is this as, as the, the actual port face, this side, rather than this side. Because if you have a look, this one of these is counterboard where I used a drill that was a fraction too big. So these are nice on the other side. I'm going to give these a clean up with a, a piece of emery tape on a, on a file. Just take all the burrs off. And might cut into length. And... 
probably you need to drill two holes here to, to screw this to the to the baseboard and just I reckon um, a couple of countersunk wood screws so I'm going to drill and countersunk those while we're at it so I found a couple of little stainless steel countersunk wood screws and they'll be a pretty good fit in there now these countersunk holes with the with the bevel on them they really want to be so they both look the same so the answer really is to take the trouble to set the depth stop so they both countersink the same and if you go in a bit under flush what you'll find is that they'll look much, much neater because the hole will actually be round, whereas you'll end up with a five-sided hole if you just go, if you use a bigger drill. So take the trouble to find a drill that's the same size as the head of the screw and just go in under flush and that'll be nice. So that's them done from the opposite side. Put the drill away. And we might give these a bit of a clean up, um, polish up this side and polish up this side, and we'll call that part done. So next thing I guess is to put it on a base so it stands upright. And that's going to be magic woodwork, so we'll see how we go with that. I'll shift this down out of the way and mark out a bit of wood and we'll, we'll cut a hole in it and clean it up. Have a wash so nothing gets all dirty. We'll see what we end up with. So a bit of a clean up here. On the back that's mostly cosmetic, on the front it's probably has its purpose. And there we go. We'll take that burr off that hole because there is one there and that should fit nicely there. We put this, this in here and do it up. That should run nicely on there. This should be a pretty good fit in here. And it's starting to look a little bit like a steam engine. So let's get in and make the base. Well, I've got to say that I'm probably worse at woodwork than I am at actual cinematography. So that's saying something. But I've marked this out square and marked a, a piece out here and cut it off and cut these in here and 
found a chisel that's somewhere near sharp. I think I'm probably just going to cut that out there. So I've cut this out. It's a bit rough in places. I try not to think too much about it. Um, it'll do the job. A coat of clear on it will be fine. Uh, woodwork isn't my thing. I promise you that. And I've just set that there. And I've marked one hole. And what I'm going to do is run a drill through that. And put this through here. Remember that because we're using stainless steel screws, they're not magnetic, so they won't stick to the screwdriver. And if we square this up nice, We can probably mark the other one as well. But to be honest, pushing a scriber into this soft pine is probably good enough to, to start a screw. I didn't want to split it, so I have drilled them. We've got two holes there like that. And there's the base of the engine, so that's pretty neat. That's quite tidy. Put this in here like this, and there's the cylinder on. We've got a flywheel and a crankshaft. It would be really nice if we could get the crankshaft running on that part of the, the cylinder. I don't think that's going to happen. I can't really think of a way to make that happen. So we might have to live with it running on the thread there. And of course our screw needs to be a lot shorter than that, we decided. So let's get the drill press out of the way for a bit.